Have you been wondering how to take that single page layout and transform it into a double page spread? Today on episode number one of Scrapbooking Tips and Tricks, I'm going to show you exactly how I made that happen right here on Mari Clark Creations. Earlier this week on my channel, I created the single page layout that you see on the left of my desk. And I will actually leave a link on this screen to that video if you didn't get to see that. But what I wanted to do was take that single page layout and I wanted to challenge myself to create a double page spread. So I am going to be using a strip of paper uh, this strip of paper that you see here from the Heidi Swap Storyline collection. And I'm going to use that strip of paper to join my two pages together. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, eventually stick that down and trim it out. And I'm also going to be using this leaf patterned paper that coordinates with that leaf um, ephemera on the left side and this so this leaf pattern paper on the right is going to bring that sort of that leaf foliage theme into the right side of the layout so I've also trimmed out two pieces of white uh, textured cardstock that are going to be uh, mats for photos for the future and I am also going to create a little bit of mixed media on that right side to coordinate with the mixed media that's on the left. So I've kind of got a plan. I have an idea and a vision of how I'm going to cohesively create that second side of my double page spread to coordinate with that left side. So basically I started off with that um, single piece of pattern paper that is going to create the eye line from the left side right onto the right and go from there. And that was sort of like the basis of the, the beginning of trying to uh, cohesively join these two pace pages together. So now I wanna get started with the mixed media. So I've treated this piece of uh, white cardstock with some gesso, just like I did with the left side. I used a little bit of Prima transparent gesso, and I'm going to go ahead and use the same Lindy's Stamp Gang colors that I used on the left on the right. So I'm going to be using colors from Alexandra's Artists, and mostly I'm going to be using some of the Karen's Coral and the Jana's Jade, a little bit of the Martina's Marigold, and those are the three colors that I'm going to focus on here. So you'll just see me add a little bit of this powder into the wells of my little watercolor tray there on the right and I'm going to activate those colors use them like watercolors basically and use my watercolor brush there to help me move the color on my paper so I'll just take my wet uh, paintbrush dab it into the pot with the pigment in it and go ahead and activate that and I will soon be ready to go ahead and paint with this medium and this is a really easy medium to use to paint with uh, super pretty it's got a little bit of shine and sparkle to it and it just adds just a really pretty effect to your uh, white cardstock now this cardstock is basil marshmallow cardstock and it is so it is a heavy uh, thick cardstock and it does take the water really well when it is primed with a little bit of that gesso so once again i'm just going to continue to add my colors to the water i thought that i might use a little bit of the um the pink and that one is called i'm just looking at it here andrea's azalea i believe and so i thought i might use a little bit of the pink but i didn't actually end up using it because i realized that i hadn't used it on the left side so did not want to use it on the right if it wasn't on the left so this is the karen's coral i've put a little bit of water i've spritzed some water onto my paper i'm just going to let that pigment uh, flow across the the paper and go ahead and just continue to um, let things dry add more colors and basically layer them in that way and in that way you just end up getting just a really nice blend of colors and all of the colors are going to of course coordinate with that left hand side so I'm just going to continue to rinse my brush out when I'm changing colors just so that I don't contaminate um, 
that particular section of my little watercolor tray and go ahead and just continue adding these pretty colors to this paper so just love this this karen's coral is just a really really a nice soft kind of a coral tone and here you can just see that's all dried now and i'm just going to go ahead and add some of the martina's marigold beside that and this is just a really pretty it's when it dries it's just sort of like a really pretty champagne color or something like it's just uh, gorgeous i love it and it definitely has just a really subtle bit of color and some really lovely sparkle to it so love how that looks when it is all dry so i'm just going to let that flow and dry as well and soon i am going to go ahead and add some of the jana's jade to my colors as well just thinking about letting that dry a little bit here and it's going to take a little bit of toweling and sop up a little bit of the excess water here and just going to dry that up dab that up a little bit and i'm actually using toilet paper i use toilet paper <laughs> in my my video for the left side as well and i was just talking about how toilet paper is actually a lot more biodegradable than paper towel and i just thought you know what i maybe should start using that and um just sort of like keep a little stack of the used toilet paper <laughs> in my in my craft space so that then I can just take it and um well flush it instead of putting it into the garbage and then in the landfill so let me know if you think that's a great idea or if it's a really dumb idea but I just thought that it kind of made sense okay so now here you can just see I'm going to go ahead and splatter some of my color on here as well and so this is just you know picking up that pigment and splattering it down and it just creates just a really neat effect I really like how this looks when it is all finished so I'm just going to tidy up my table there and there you can just see that toilet paper roll just rolling on through there and it's a lot less awkward also to work with than a great big huge roll of paper towel so yeah I'm just using that using it up using that toilet paper I know um, some of you are probably really cringing because it it definitely was in a short supply there for a while but it's um it's I think it's back I think toilet paper is back in full stock <laughs> Okay, here we go with the Janus Jade. I'm going to go ahead and splatter some of that Janus Jade on here and work it into the little areas where there's sort of like a little bit of white space or some lighter areas and get that down. So I'm just going to continue to add a little bit more here and there of that um, Janus Jade and... I'm almost finished with the mixed media for as far as the magicals go. And then I'm going to do a little bit of the foiling like I did on the left side. So I wanted to just mirror that foiling a little bit. I didn't want to add too much, but just a tiny little bit to this left side of this paper here that I'm working on here. So I'll just do a little bit of that foiling over the magicals here on this side. So I'm just going to dry that up, get that all nicely dried. And actually, I'm going to run this through my laminator just, um, just like this, just before I even add the foiling onto it, just to flatten it out a little bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and do that foiling. So I'm just going to take some of the Heidi Swap white texture paste. I'm going to add that through this stencil. This is the same stencil, the same Tim Holtz stencil that I used on the left side of the double page spread. And I will link up to all of these products in the description box down below so that you can if you do decide that you want to find these products you can do that uh, you don't need the Heidi Swap texture paste to do this technique you can use uh, acrylic gel matte medium things like that anything that the foil will stick to you can actually use um, I just happened to have this texture paste and was just wanting to try it out with this effect on my scrapbook layout so there you can see there's that same mint colored foil that I used on the left side of my double page spread and I wanted to just use that again here this is just it's quite subtle I know that it probably looks like it's not really all that subtle but it actually is 
and there you can see that's all ready to go and now I actually have run it through my laminator and here's the big reveal. This is some foil that I've actually already used on another project so I just wanted to use up some more of the foil on that and I'm just going to go ahead and save those bits again and try to use up the rest of that foil on another project. Now I also wanted to use that same stamp, that same Stampers Anonymous stamp that I used on the left side. I am going to go ahead and pick up some of that morning mist versifying or versifying claire ink i'm going to do some third generation stamping here i'm going to stamp off twice and then the third time i'm going to go to the layout i'm going to stamp over there on the side because i'm going to do that same tearing effect that i did on the other side of the dps and i'm going to stamp on the lower section of this layout as well with that stamp before i clean it off just to use that or create that impression of that uh, image again in another area so just to duplicate that same um, stamp stamping I love that. It's such a cool stamp. Now I'm just going to do a little bit more splattering here. I'm going to go in with the Jenna's Jade and the, the uh, gold color there and just create some of those splatters. And I'm going to go ahead and splatter over where that stamping is as well. And then I will just let that dry a little bit. I actually am going to bring my heat tool in and dry it. And once I feel like it is kind of semi-dried I'm going to go ahead with my uh, tissue and roll through that again and pick up the excess so that it's just like a little bit of subtle splattering on there so that it's not too dark but uh, it's dark enough that you'll be able to see it so I'll just dry it a bit and then pick up the excess with the tissue and that will be it for the splattering and at this point I'm ready to go ahead and start sticking down my paper. Now this piece here I'm going to go ahead and stick down right underneath the photo there and then trim off the excess and then I will use a longer piece across the right side. So there you can see I've got that strip there adhered down and I'm just going to lift that up. I'm going to trim that piece off and it actually matches up perfectly with the other side once I get it all trimmed off. And now I am going to go ahead and start getting the things on the right side stuck down there. So there you can see that eye line that's created with that pattern paper. The same pattern paper on the left side is on the right and it just takes your eye across both sides. And that's a huge tip that I would offer to you when you're trying to create a double page spread using a single page layout one of the big things that you need to do is to create that eye line that's going to run from left to right right to left so that it creates that cohesiveness uh, between the two sides and then of course using um, like colors or techniques so exa for example the mixed media technique and the foiling and whatnot the stamping I use those all on my second side as well and this pattern paper that I'm going to put behind my photo mats is the same pattern paper that I used behind the photo on the left side so I'm just going to mark off where I want to cut this paper going to get it all trimmed out and then I'm going to stick that down on that green foliage paper. So I'll just get that all trimmed up. It's all trimmed and I think I've got it stuck down at this point point. and you can see that I did trim off that foliage paper a little bit as well. It was a little bit too tall and now I'm going to start to get some um, craft foam behind those photo mat areas so uh, I don't have photographs that I'm going to place on this layout I'm not going to completely finish embellish and whatnot this uh, right side but I did just want to show you how you could create it and then of course you can just go ahead I, I can go ahead later and add whatever embellishments and photos to this when I'm ready to finish this up I'm just going to get this stuck down and I wanted it to be stuck down so that there's the same amount of border around the photo mat at the top as at the, the bottom. And so I'm just going to adjust that a little bit and 
then I will be able to go ahead and stick those photo mats down as well. So I'm just adjusting that just a tiny little bit. Pretty happy with how that's looking right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my tape runner. I'm going to put the tape runner on the paper and then stick the craft foam to that. I don't, I try not to add too much liquid adhesive onto the craft foam when I'm adding that dimension, just because it will warp the paper a little bit. So I try to be really careful with that. And this type of tape runner that I'm using here is pretty good. It's very, very sticky and the craft foam will stick to that really well. So I'm just going to adhere that down and get those placed exactly where I want them. Just gonna kind of wiggle them around until I feel like I've got things even and that will be the placement of those photo mats and I'm just showing you here that's obviously where your photos are going to go and then there, I'm going to do the little tear away effect over here on the side that's going to match up with the uh, layout on the left. I'm going to do a, cup, a little bit of stapling and I'm going to back that area with a little bit of pattern paper and then I'm just going to show you here you can do some title work on that strip there's, you could do a little cluster in this area that I'm showing you here now. Um, lots of opportunities and places where you can put things down on your layout to coordinate it with the right side, now or with the left side rather. So now I'm just going to go ahead and stick that little bit of pattern paper behind that little tearaway section like it is on the layout on the left. And this is going to be all finished. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun challenging myself to create a double page spread from a single page layout. And I hope you enjoyed this too. I hope you um, were inspired and picked up a few tips and tricks that will help you to take a single page layout and make it into a double page spread in the future. It's actually not that tough to do. Um, you just need to repeat some of the elements from the one side that you've already created and then create that eye line and you're good to go to create the rest of your project. So uh, stay safe, stay well, everybody. Uh, I hope to see you back here another time. If you like this video, please make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Have an amazing day and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.